Well, Merry Christmas, y'all. I thought I would begin by reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, where it says that God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, for the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. And he will be great, and he'll be called the Son of the Most High, and his kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month right now, for nothing is impossible with God. I love that uh, scene out of Charlie Brown, when Charlie Brown just throws his arms up and says, what is Christmas all about anyway? And... You know, little Linus gets out there, says, lights, please, and starts, like, reading the scripture. But, you know, there's a lot of truth in that because we all get caught up in so much stuff that we lose the real meaning of what Christmas is all about. I mean, when we're younger, it's all about, you know, the the gifts and the toys and playing, and we kind of hit the middle age, teenage years, and everything's kind of bah humbug, and we're all bored with it. But then, you know, as we get older... It's like we just dive headfirst into the Christmas chaos and we cram as much in as humanly possible. The the parties and the family gatherings, we get ourselves all whipped up into a frenzy to make sure that we could buy our kid or our grandkid that one toy that's it this year. And so we fight through the crowds and in the quest to get this toy and Then we sit back on Christmas and we wonder why we don't enjoy the holidays as much as we think we should. Right? Where is the peace on earth stuff? But what really is the true meaning of Christmas? What's it all about? I think for me, it comes down to that one simple verse at the end of that passage in Luke where the angel Gabriel looks Mary in the eye and says, nothing, nothing is impossible with God. So when you think about it, on the surface, we all know, right, intuitively, that the true meaning of Christmas has to do with stuff like the birth of Jesus and the shepherds and the wise men and all the angels and all that stuff. But could it be that it's just too crazy of a story to really embrace and believe, and is it possible that deep down, we really question the whole thing, like it doesn't connect for me? Do we really believe in the true meaning of Christmas, or is this just another commercial holiday that leaves me empty? I mean, after all, it really is so hard to accept. And we're evidently We're not alone in this. I mean, Mary wasn't buying it, right? I mean, how many times did she question the whole thing and say, how is this possible? Joseph was ready to call it quits before the angel showed up and calmed him down. So if it's that hard to believe, while it's happening in real time to the people it's happening to, and these people have the luxury of an angel sent by God standing there in front of them, convincing them that's all true, How much more difficult is it for me and you to believe some 2,000 years later just from some of these verses that are scribbled down in the Bible? And yet, I think that it all comes down to this one word, faith. Can you find the faith to believe? And so when you hear those words, nothing, nothing is impossible for God. Ask yourself, do I really believe it? Nothing impossible? Really? And so we pray, Lord, I believe. 
but please help my unbelief. Sometimes in our quest for belief, we think that if we could just learn more or see more or understand more, then I'll be able to fully believe. But the problem is that the more we know, the less we understand. I mean, I can honestly tell you that I know more of the Bible right now than I ever have, and yet I understand less than ever. Why would God do what he did the way that he did it? It just doesn't make any sense. Someone once said, if knowing answers to life's questions is an absolute necessity for you, then you're going to be frustrated all along the journey. In fact, you may not even make it. For this is a journey of unknowables, of unanswered questions, of incomprehensibles, and most of all, things that just don't make any sense. I've learned in my life to grow increasingly more comfortable with mystery rather than certainty. We've all seen too much, I think, to walk away from our faith, and yet we have seen too little to be absolutely certain. And that's why the Bible says that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. The power of Christmas, I think, is in the mystery of it all. Not that any of it should make any sense. It's the most mysterious story in the entire Bible. I mean, Son of God, when he was born, it should have been the fact that he was born in a palace, not in a stable. His father should have been a king, not a carpenter. Pillowcases should be satin, the sheets made of silk, not lying in a manger. It's just not right. But as you delve deeper into the story and you get into the images of the angels and the wise men and the virgin birth and the multitude of angels appearing to the shepherds and all of that, the true meaning of Christmas begins to take focus and suddenly you realize in your heart of hearts, deep down, I believe. I believe in this stuff. But the tragedy of Christmas is when all of our beliefs get pushed aside and we continue to get caught up in all of the Christmas chaos. We get so busy that most of us sitting here are actually in shock this morning to discover that this is not a dream. This is your wake-up call. It really is Christmas Eve morning 2017, and you're wondering, how did I get here? But it is not too late to take back your Christmas. And it is not too late to embrace the true meaning of Christmas because Christmas is not something that happens one day a year. Because the simple message of Christmas is this, that whatever it is that you're going through in your life, whenever you go through it, nothing is impossible for God. 2,000 years ago, we caught a glimpse of God. Jesus came so that we could see who God really is. And we found out that we have a God who is loving and compassionate. He's a God who accepts us as we are, and he loves us anyway. He came so that he could identify with us to experience what you experience, to feel what you feel. And one of the ways that we celebrate that at Christmas is that we give out of a generous heart. I think it's one thing to give our kids an Xbox because that's the thing they've been wanting. It's quite another to give to people who have nothing and to share something so that they too can experience the joy of Christmas, the joy of giving. And that's exactly what's been happening around here at Westridge. I've never been so proud to be part of a group of people like all of you, and your generosity has been absolutely contagious. So for the last few weeks, incredible things have happened. So uh, first of all, we partner with Huff Elementary, which is in one of the most impoverished neighborhoods of Elgin, and we did a toy drive. We thought if we could just get toys in here and then have it all set up so that parents could have access to toys they wouldn't have otherwise. And so this auditorium was converted to a big toy store. And parents from Huff Elementary came in, and they were able to shop 
to get presents for their kids that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. While the kids were out having breakfast and in Santa's workshop and being entertained by everybody else, while the parents were free to shop to be able to get presents that they wouldn't have otherwise been able to give. And it was a beautiful thing. And so over 400 kids received presents this year because of all of you and your generosity, which is awesome. Thank you. In the same way with uh, Nika Angels, which is our ministry to Nicaragua, uh, a group of people figured out that we really wanted to figure out how to deliver Christmas dinners to the families that we serve in Nicaragua. And so over 100 families in Nicaragua received Christmas dinners who otherwise wouldn't have anything, probably. And so um, I can't imagine the semi-truck that went down the dirt road into the middle of nowhere to open the doors and to deliver over 100 meals for all of the families in Tecaloste and Tambercito uh, and San Pablo. And it was a beautiful thing to see all these families having Christmas dinners that they wouldn't have otherwise had. So thank you again for your generosity. And so when I think about what Christmas is really all about, I think about that. I think about those moments when we, when we find the faith to believe, it stirs in us a generosity that we can't explain. Because we're so inspired by the beauty of the story of Christmas and the gift of Jesus that we just have to give back for the generosity that was given to me. That while we were yet sinners, while we didn't deserve a thing, Jesus died for us. He died on the cross so that we could have hope and forgiveness and grace. And so every Sunday here at Westridge, we take communion. We take this little piece of bread, this little cup of juice, because we celebrate the moment that Jesus gave his life so that we could have grace and eternal life. And so in just a moment, the ushers are going to pass out communion, and you can take that in remembrance of the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And then immediately following that, the ushers will pass out the offering bags that if you came prepared to give a gift and continue in your generosity to make a difference in the lives of so many, then you're able to do that as well. Let's pray together. Father, we are just so grateful for your love and for the magic of Christmas. We thank you that it is all because of the gift of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, the story continues when it says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. And so they followed the star they had seen until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of frankincense and of myrrh. The image of a, uh, of a starry sky is a thing of mystery and imagination. I mean, the starry sky is often used as a backdrop for romance and beauty and poetry. And, and the fact that we wish upon a star is an indication of just how much we connect stars with dreams and hope. There is something magical about the stars, and our wishes reflect how we hope that somehow we can get some of that magic in our lives. And it was a star that led the Magi to the baby Jesus. The wise men were seeking, trying to find meaning in the stars, and because they were looking, they found the one star that would change everything. In the Old Testament book of Isaiah, it says, Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each star by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Is there any question in your mind that it was God himself who placed that star over the stable where Jesus was born on that holy night? And if God places 
each star in the sky every night, as Isaiah says, and calls every one of the stars by name. How much more do you think that God knows who you are, what you're going through, and the details of your life? There are a lot of us here this morning who are entering this Christmas time with a sense of dread. We can't celebrate the way we'd like to because of the pain of a loss of somebody who is close to us and we're experiencing and going through a time of grief. Or you're just praying that this time together as a family won't end in some big brawl. Or you're worried because you're not able to provide for your family like you'd like to this year because it's tough times. And so many of us enter this holy moment that we call Christmas and our faith is worn and tattered and we feel parched and dry and life can seem so dark sometimes. But can we find the strength to lift up our eyes and look into the heavens and believe in the one who placed every star in the sky and know that there is a light in the distance that if we just believe, if we just follow, will lead us into a place that can bring hope even in the darkest moments of our lives. <clears throat> can you find the strength to believe that nothing, nothing is impossible with God? Well, it is not too late to take back your Christmas and embrace the true meaning of the beauty of the story that we just heard. To see the power of God lying in a manger. We may never ever truly understand all the ins and outs of it and the certainty of it, but we can thank God that he did something that no one thought to be possible. The Christmas story is one of the biggest mysteries of the Christian faith and for centuries, mankind has tried to analyze it, rationalize it, and explain it away. But what if you can't rationalize the irrational? What if instead of trying to explain it, what if we just embraced it? Embrace the, the mystery of it. The wonder of it. What if we allowed ourselves to to just stand in awe of it, to be amazed by it. The most magical moment of Christmas for me is the moment where we light these candles and we stand together and we sing Silent Night. There's something that happens in this moment. And whatever it is for you, whatever it is that you're going through, I pray that in this magical moment that there may be found peace and a blessing from God for you this Christmas. So if you will, just stand with us and we'll sing Silent Night together. <clears throat> 